this episode of the vlog, we're going to take you behind the scenes at the Poplar River Mine to show you how Saskatchewan uses some of the largest earth movers in the world to mine coal that powers homes in Saskatchewan and beyond. So get ready to learn about all about how they mine coal in Saskatchewan, what kind of coal they mine, and some of the, some of the equipment they use to do it. Today we are touring the Poplar River Mine, a lignite coal mine located in Saskatchewan near the town of Coronac that mines lignite coal. The mine opened in 1979 and produces 2.2 to 3.4 million tons of lignite coal every year, supplying it to the adjacent Sask Power Poplar River Station for generation of baseload electricity. Today the mine is operated by Westmoreland Mining, one of the oldest independent coal mining companies in North America. Founded in 1854, they have a 150 year plus history of mining coal. Interestingly enough, they were actually founded in Westmoreland County of Pennsylvania, hence where the name comes from. And today they operate mines all over Canada and the continental US, so North America. Our tour today begins at the Ready Line, where Cat 777 get prepped and operators get on board to take the 777 coal haulers out to the pit. So here we go. As we'll see in this video, we're going to take you through the various steps of mining, but before mining can commence, we have to salvage the topsoil or cover soil and any vegetation which is used later on in the reclamation process. That process basically involves bulldozers pushing up the topsoil into windrows, then an excavator or a wheel loader as you're about to see will come through, salvage the topsoil and save it in stockpiles for use later in reclamation. Once that material is removed, then the drag lines can come in and start removing the overburden, which is the material just below the surface layer of topsoil or cover soil, as we call it. This is the Bucyrus Erie 2570W. It's one of two of drag lines out here at the Poplar River Mine. And they use this to remove overburden. So the drag line doesn't actually mine any coal. He just comes in and removes the overlying material over top the coal seam, which is overburden. 
and then they'll come in with a set of dozers and clean the coal off and then after that they come in with 993s and 777 coal haulers and remove the actual coal seam which is then hauled off to the power generating station but the drag line is the king of earth movers nothing really compares to it and that's why they run them here to remove overburden it's got a 93 cubic yard esco bucket on it so what he's doing is he's using his bucket to clean off the coal so and when he when he scoops and dumps things, he creates what's called spoils or spoil piles, and they're usually adjacent to the open cut. But yeah, they're pretty. They're really interesting to watch work. They're basically the size of your average condo building, fully electric, and nothing compares to the drag line. Nothing can move more earth than a drag line can. That's why they use them out here at Poplar River, is to remove the large amounts of overburden over top of the coal. That bucket looks like it just got Drag lines dig what is called a box cut, a long rectangular cut where coal is extracted, spoiling or dumping overburden into adjacent mined out cuts for reclamation. They are equipped with a system called Pegasus. It was a software developed by Mineware. The system allows operators to view their dig profile in real time based off a surveyed mine plan, showing them the cut, fill, benches, and sloping as they dig. The software also monitors payload, machine stresses, and tracks production metrics and other key operating points on the drag line. As well. So this purple line, you can see how we cut in there and leave a bench there. So that's our high wall. Okay. And then these two white lines are just the coal edges. Huh. This purple line will be, it'll be the east, east high wall. Interesting. Yeah, and the green and the blue line are our pad edges. So where he's pushing dirt out there, that would be the pad edge out there. And this is all just... And then this is all just monitors stuff in the back, yep. So those are our swing temperatures, hoist temperatures, drag temperatures. Um, yeah, you can go all of our uh, intake and exhaust fans. All our loop systems, like that. That's just... Once the overburden is removed by the drag lines, then a fleet of wheel loaders and CAT 777 coal haulers will come in and mine the main seam of lignite coal in the pit bottom, as you're about to see. This is the coal they mine here at Poplar River. This is called lignite, or Saskatchewan lignite. They use this coal to generate electricity, so it's consumed or burned to generate power. 
And what they do here is the drag line works ahead of the coal haulers, the 993. So the drag line, which is Great Gus, a Bucyrus Erie 2570W drag line, it strips off all the overburden, which can be over 100 feet deep at some times. And once he gets the overburden off, a 993 and a fleet of 777 coal haulers come in, and he loads out the coal, which is then hauled over to the rail facility, which is loaded out and then hauled to the power plant. So this is the stuff that keeps the lights on here in Saskatchewan and beyond. Saskatchewan lignite. So what is lignite coal? Lignite coal is the lowest rank of coal. It hasn't been subjected to high temperatures and pressures like anthracite or subbitumous coal. Lignite is formed by the compression of peat or organic matter. It is often a brown blackish coal that produce, is burned to produce energy, so electricity generation. So this right here, this is a three inch cable. This is called the trailing cable, or that's a professional term for a big extension cord. This is 25,000 volts, and this supplies power to Great Gus, a Bucyrus Erie 2570W drag line. So it can draw up to 10 megawatts of power, and all that comes from this cable. So this cable runs from the drag line all the way back to the power lines, which come from the power generating station. So drag line mines Saskatchewan lignite coal. That coal is then transported to the power generating station. It's consumed or burned, generates electricity, which then comes back here and powers the very drag line that digs it. So this is a trailing cable. Very important piece to the drag line operation. Once coal is mined in the bottom of the box cut, it's loaded into Cat 777 coal haulers and they make the journey from the active pit, which Poplar River has a few, all the way to the train loadout facility. So that's why they have these larger coal haulers, so they can maximize the amount of coal they can move per trip. So this is the coal loadout facility here at Poplar River Mine. The 777 coal haulers bring coal here from the pit. They dump it in a crusher, which crushes it to a six inch minus. It then goes up a conveyor and is loaded into a silo. And from there it's stored until the train comes around and is loaded up. They have 23 cars on the train holding about roughly a hundred ton a car. So it's about a 2000 metric ton train. And they haul it from here all the way down to the power station, which is south of here, where it's consumed and generates electricity. So Poplar River is one of the only mines that I know of, at least it has their own railway in Canada, and what's one of the facts that makes them really unique. The train travels from the coal loadout facility 22 kilometers south of the mine to Sask Power's Poplar River Station. The round trip takes roughly two hours and the train makes four to six trips per day. The rail line is the longest privately owned short line in Western Canada. 
Once the coal arrives at Sask Power's Poplar River Station is unloaded, stockpiled, and then from there it is further crushed into a really fine powder in which it is injected into boilers, burned to create heat. That heat creates steam. That steam turns turbines, which creates electricity to generate what's called baseload electricity. Poplar River Station has two generating stations, both at 315 megawatts each, and it can generate up to 582 net megawatts of baseload electricity. So what is baseload electricity? Baseload electricity is the minimum amount of electricity or power the grid needs to operate over a certain set period of time. So over 24 hours, it may need X amount of power. That's our baseload electricity, and that's what Poplar River Station generates. After coal has been mined, the most important part of mining takes place, which is reclamation. Reclamation at Poplar River involves numerous steps. After coal has been extracted from the bottom of the pit, the drag lines will go in and start to fill the pits. From there, dozers will come in and recontour the land, level out spoil piles. From there, we place cover soil or topsoil. And after that, we eventually seed the land back to a productive state, which in Poplar River's case is usually hay or alfalfa. And what's interesting fact about Poplar River is they reclaim roughly 100 hectares of land every year. So as they mine, they're also reclaiming. So it's a really fine example of how miners are true stewards of the land. So this is one of the stages of reclamation here at Poplar River. After the drag line is filled in the box cut, the D10 moves in to re-slope and re-contour the land. So he's just taking all the spoil piles and he's leveling them out, flattening them, creating contours, preparing it for then reapplication of cover soil. So they have a few D10s out here at Poplar River and their primary job is to work around the drag lines, work in the pit, but also do reclamation. Once it's recontoured, then we're ready to place topsoil, which we've saved earlier on in the mining process. So that's what they're doing here is they're replacing all the topsoil with wiggle wagons and an excavator. So they're salvaging it from stockpiles and placing it on recontoured land. So after, after this, it's then leveled out, recontoured, and then they seed it and return it to a productive stake, which is usually some sort of grassland or hay field. So. Big thank you to Westmoreland Mining for having us out to Poplar River. Thank you again for them for allowing us access to see how they mine and some of the great people that work there and some of the equipment they use. It truly was a special journey and I hope you learned something today about how we mine coal in Saskatchewan to power the world around us. So again, big thank you to Westmoreland Mining. If you want to learn more about Westmoreland or Poplar River Mine, I will leave the links to both Westmoreland Mining and Poplar River Mine in the description below.